Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. I have David Watson with me. David Watson is a deep trance channeler and a life strategist. And today, looks like we are going to talk about stress. <laughs> a topic that I think a lot of us have been through, especially you know, with a lot of the stuff that's been happening in the universal skies lately and uh, just all the stuff that's sort of been um, playing with, uh, with the energy. So again, welcome David. Well, it's good to be back. Thanks, Brian. In the new studio. Yeah, the new studio. <laughs> Look at that. It's a little bit more uh, professional, a little bit more uh, brighter. Listen, All right. Every day and every way. <laughs> All uh, right. So let's talk about stress. Right. So <clears throat> I think I think uh, a lot of people uh, uh, today like to say, you know, I'm stressed. I feel stressed. Um, according to uh, a lot of our modern medical um, uh, writings these days, uh, uh, we're attributing more and more different medical conditions to stress, right. heart conditions. Even even cancers are now being looked at as perhaps stress-driven. I would say that pretty much every disease that we have has to do with stress. That's right. But but the fact is, is it's a matter of defining what stress is. I mean, if you Absolutely. look at the, uh, the terms in, in metallurgy, for example, you know, you have you, you. They do stress tests on different metals and that sort of thing, and that gives us an opportunity to see how flexible they are and and how far they go before they snap. Well, it seems that stress apparently has the same kind of effect on us. Right. But my big question has always been, where does the stress come from? And everybody that I know will say, "Hey, out there," and the actual fact is. Does it? Mm, no. That's my question. I mean, does it really come from out there, or is it how we're how we're filtering information through our our, our minds, uh, how we perceive things? I mean, we're all we're all a collection of a variety of different beliefs and uh, uh, and truths and uh, understandings and and uh, and values in yeah. life, and it's all those things that actually have a tendency to get in the way of the things that are happening around us, which help provide us with the opinions or the vision that we hold for the things around us. For example, if you see somebody that you really like, okay, you don't feel stressed, you see them, you walk up to them, uh, you know, you, you know, if you haven't seen them for a while, you might even run up to them and give them a big hug, and they give you a big hug, and there's no stress involved with that at all. But what, what, what if that person had been somebody that had been a bully when you were a kid, and you saw that same person, and they saw you, and they changed, but your vision of them hadn't changed. So they were coming towards you, and your first reaction would be to run away from them because they're even bigger than they were when you were in school. Right. And, you know, that look on their face, was that a smile or was that a snarl? You weren't too sure, you know. And in actual fact, what it is is the way that we're interpreting the information that's coming through. And I think that's what's important to understand the basis of stress because it's, it's how we filter the information based on what we've learned about certain things in life, whether they work for us or not. A lot of people talk about stress, and they talk about uh, the fact that I feel stressed when I feel helpless or hopeless or somebody's trying to control me or things of that nature. Again, it's how we interpret those things through our own belief systems. Well, I mean, what do you think? Okay, so as you've been talking, I've been trying to think of different stressors that, um, I mean, it is always perception, it is always our filters, but there are some things that are so unconscious to us, mm -hmm. like the environment. So there are environmental stressors that can impact our health, that can impact um, our mental state, our physical state, I mean, it can, mm -hmm. in, you, you know, I didn't know that I had a, an intolerance to diesel until I drove a bus for <laughs> a while. A while. Right? So I didn't know what it was doing to my body because I, I just was completely unconscious of the fact that I had an intolerance. So, yes, I would agree that it's always, it. I mean, it, it has everything to do with our perceptions and our filters. Yeah. It's the problem is, is when we're not aware of them. And because there's so much in our world where we're, you know, unconsciously just kind of going through the, our days, 
I mean, I knew I didn't like the smell of diesel. <laughs> you know, well, I knew that, you know, as I was driving the bus, right. it didn't feel good. However, we're looking at a different type of stress. Right. We're looking, we're looking at environmental stress, which is the same as the kind of stress that we would have if we applied pressure to, you know, a particular type of metal to determine what its breaking point was. But at the same token, we can have a hundred different people experience the same environmental stresses and only some of them will get cancer. The other, you know, the other may get something else. The other may, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it has to do everything with our perceptions. It's just that we're unconscious. And that was just the one thing that came up well, to the, mind. The key, the key word is, is unconscious. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, the, it's important to remember that the unconscious mind is, is, is where we store our memories, yeah. our beliefs, and our emotions. Yeah. So, like, they're all hanging around just under the surface, ready to emerge at any given moment that the conscious mind inter intervenes with something in life that's necessary to bring that, that you know, stored information into consciousness. Right. Therefore, it's not no longer unconscious. <laughs> it becomes uh, blatantly conscious. But the thing is, with some of the information in the way that we store it, that's another way you have to really consider it. How do we store the information? And mostly when we store information, we bring it inside, we remember it, or it goes to the unconscious level, where it's distorted, deleted, and generalized. That's what we do in there. That's an NLP presupposition. Sure. The moment something comes in, it becomes distorted, deleted, and generalized just so we can recall it in some right. succinct right. way. Right. Therefore, we don't actually remember what we actually saw. All we remember is how we felt about it. Or, or, or what occurred, and depending on whether we're a kinesthetic person, uh, basically, or an emotional, per, uh, you know, an emotional person, uh, whether we're phys uh, or whether we're um, an auditory person, we learn mostly from hearing, or whether we're visual, we store memories in different ways as well. Absolutely. Okay, so all of those things are come into, into account, and because because sometimes we store information uh, because of, of of an event that happened in our life that we have to be protected from. Say right. at five, we were being bullied by somebody and we had a certain way of behaving, like running and hiding, for example, right. or, or crying or doing something like that. Yeah. That, that is, is, is a way to, to, to basically learn a certain belief or, or, or plug in a certain belief that we carry our whole lives. Yeah. And, yeah. and quite often we've got a lot of younger people living inside of us and we're living <laughs> with their decisions, right? Right, right. And not only reactive decisions, but other decisions as well. What we should do about life, what we should do about relationships, what we, how we, you know, uh, what, what we should believe about things. And, and basically, once in a while it's good to do a review of those kind of things and, and to sort of go back and go, geez, when did I learn that one? Oh, geez, when I was three or five. Or who yeah. did I learn from, mom or dad, you know? Like, it's that kind of thing where we can begin, not to challenge, but shall we say to review and perhaps to revise some of the ways that we're seeing life, right. you know, because just the same way as you take your car in for a checkup to the garage, you know, every so often it's good to do a little checkup in your head and to check out some of the things that might be keeping you stuck or or, or being or being or being um, being unable to get past a certain uh, a certain uh, thing that's presenting itself to you. This is all stressful. Yeah. However, all these things are stressful. Without having a conscious awareness of it, the stress becomes more and more. Right. So, so, so we, we, we actually know that then that, that the things that happen to us under stress uh, are the way that we react to them, what our feelings or our beliefs are around them. So, right. Uh, what are we going to do about that? You know, there's different ways to approach that, and different ways of changing the way we perceive things. Right. So, I think, I think. You know that's that's kind of why I wanted to talk about stress today. No, it's great. Not to only think. not only just talking about it because you know oh I'm stressed. You know, we can <laughs> take call-ins from people telling us how stressed they are. Uh, we don't need them. You know, we got people right here <laughs> living it on a daily basis. But yeah. but the fact we is, all live it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. We do. So so you know like what 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 do we do about it? And and I think the first thing uh, is to become consciously aware of the fact that we have a problem. That this or that or the other thing sets me off. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's good if we have good friends who are around us uh, who might point these things out to us in certain key moments yes. uh, of high stress. But whatever the case may be, it's important that, that we don't review it when we're in the stressful state, but afterwards, you know. So, well, I, I mean, I think we can get ourselves out of it if we can acknowledge that it's just our ego reacting to something. I mean, I think if we can go, oh, wait a minute, I'm not feeling the way I was, you know, yeah. five minutes ago. What's changed? And then you can go, oh yeah, <laughs> okay, well, what's this all about? And play with it. And well, I, you know, that's that's great when you're not stressed. You know, 
That's what I'm well, saying. Yeah. So, like, when you're in the middle of it, my feeling has been always in the past, you know, go with the flow. Because if I'm stressed or I'm, I'm really, I'm really jugged out for one reason or another, somebody cuts me off on the road and I get all indignant or something like that. I, I don't do that anymore. I just thank God that they didn't hit me now, you know. But, <laughs> but in days gone by, I've dealt with it in a different way, and many of us still do. And and the fact is, is how do we deal with that stress? It's a reaction. It's a, it's a state where we go from, from a feeling of being comfortable within ourselves to suddenly, you know, having our world disrupted. And and the thing we hate most about life is, 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 is change, you know. Yeah. So if we're just you know, hanging out and life is going fine, that's great. But when something comes along and challenges it, then we feel threatened again. Yes. And when we feel threatened, sometimes we feel helpless. When we feel helpless, helplessness brings up stress. It also brings up depression, anger, fear, and, uh, you know, a few of those other uh, <laughs> happy emotions that we we, uh, we have to contend with uh, yeah. in our human, uh, yeah. uh, our human experience, <laughs> our journey, you know. Our journey that's right. on this... Yes, this life filled with endless potential, and yet we get we get caught up in the small things that yeah. that take us off our game and push us to uh, something that is, you know, not where we want to be. And and we just have to shift that filter. We just have to, you know, be a conscious when we're, you know, playing in the wrong in the wrong game that we're not wanting to be. That's in. right. However, humans do have a tendency to be somewhat obsessive. <laughs> for certain uh, things, we are a bit obsessive. Yes, I think I think we all are. And in actual fact, if we hadn't been, we wouldn't we wouldn't have built the, the cities we have. We wouldn't have moved forward in the way that we have done. That's where our obsession comes in in a positive way. But when if that mm. if that obsession is is kind of like internalized, and we spend a lot of time going over a certain thing or a certain feeling or a certain thought, in those moments, what happens? Is we get stuck in, in, in the in that place emotionally, and and we we literally run run that that tape over and over and over again, and we can't pull out of it. It's like it's like you get a song in your head and you can't get rid of it. Right. You know, I don't want to talk about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but you know, the fact is is that uh, is that uh, we 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 do run into those things. I have lots of people I've worked with over the years, and I've done lots of work with them, and we go through the work, and everything's fine, and they're feeling great at the end of it. You go, wow, I. I won't clear. And like a week or two later, I get a call from them. And, oh, man, and they're obsessing about the same thing again. Yeah. And, and essentially, it's not something. It's, there's, the cure rate on that isn't high, you know. I think, I think the cure rate only happens through self awareness. See, I was always under the other impression. It was like if something keeps coming up in my face, I must have something to do with it. So then I would I would go about and try and fix it and change all the stuff around me and then and then I'd talk to them and they were still on the same thing. I'm like, really? But I just I just fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so either I didn't fix it completely for me or, you know, they had their own agenda that they're playing stuck in and yeah. you know. Yeah. Well I, I, I think I think I think that that's something that we have to focus on and say, if it's a human behavior right. to obsess on things until we solve it. Okay, certain things that we begin to obsess about, we can't solve. There's not an answer. It's like it's like you're running around in, in a little room and you can't find the door. And you're stuck in that room, right? You know, so it's it's those kind of things that we the only way we can get out of that is to realize that we are the room, right? You know, and, right? And, yeah, which is what I usually, you know, usually try to focus on that if it's something that somebody's going on, especially if it's a pattern. Like we, we when we get patterns, <laughs> there's always a reason why we get patterns of you know either people coming to us for advice or yeah. you know seeing it in your friends or you know. As long as it's done more than once and it's in my face, then I know it has something to do with me. Well, it always does. You know, yeah. you have lots of people coming to see you about a particular thing. Right. That's uh, therapist beware, you know. So. <laughs> exactly. Uh, take notes. It's all right. We're going to go to our first break now. Okay. We may good. come back. We may come back with the willows. Who knows? But We'll uh, see. We'll see. We're going to go for our first break. You are listening to News for the Heart. I have David Watson. If you want to know more about David, go to his web website, Ask. So askthewillows.com. That's askthewillows.com. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lori Houston, and I have a great show on bmajor.org called News for the Heart. I'm an intuitive counselor, coach, and teacher with professional qualifications and certifications, as well as natural clairsentient and claircognizant abilities. 
I've been on my spiritual path for over 20 years, and during that time have acquired through extensive studies, teachings, and sacred texts, over 30 different healing modalities, which are continuously being added to as life is an ongoing journey. My passion is on relationships, limiting beliefs, energy that is blocking you, and awakening consciousness as we become more heart-centered. You can find out more about me at my website, intuitivesoul.com, or call me at my toll-free number, 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685, and I'd be honored to connect with you. Let's get to the heart of what matters. Do you want to become more empowered, connected with your core, guided by your heart and soul's purpose, be more balanced and have more mindfulness? Are you searching for the answers, wanting to understand your relationships better, why your intimate relationships, friends, family, and even work colleagues can impact your quality of life? How your relationships interfere with your business, career opportunities, and even starting your own business? I'm Lori Houston. I have a free weekly advice column with bmajor.org called Heart Lessons. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggle that keep us from awakening to our true essence. You can send me your questions or for more personal guidance, contact me at intuitivesoul.com or call me at my toll-free number 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685. And let's get to the heart of what matters to see your heart lessons. Want to know where you can hear Lori Houston's News for the Heart? Well, that's easy. You can tune in to Lori via Clear Channel's iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and at bmajor.org. Now, back to Lori Houston and News from the Heart. And welcome back. This is News for the Heart. I'm back with David Watson, but actually David's gone to sleep. <laughs> And we have brought in the willows. And today we're talking about stress and how just the impact that stress has and the fact that, you know, often with regards to stress, we're unconscious of it. So I guess I thought it would be nice to bring you in. I know that you you're, you always have, you know, a, a wonderful ideas to to offer us. So I thought I would bring the willows in and just see where this goes. Uh, discussing the aspect of stress, yes? Mm, yes, exactly. Well, in as much as did this be the case here, uh, uh, stress, as you already have defined, is something that happens uh, uh, through you, uh, not something that happens to you. Right. So it becomes a matter of personal choice and personal perspective that allows you to deal with the world in whatever way you choose that is around you. It's always important to remember that uh, uh, rather than trying to deal with stress or, or attempting to fight it directly, because indeed that's quite stressful, <laughs> uh, we would say the best thing to do is to wait until you are not feeling stressed in the moment and then to sit down quietly and to do a little bit of a meditation for yourself. And meditation not in the sense, which can be stressful as well if you're not <laughs> a good meditator, but a meditation in the way that you simply just sit down quietly and just begin to listen to everything around you, preferably somewhere quiet. Uh, you can listen to the silence in the room. Uh, you can begin to feel yourself sitting in the chair you're sitting in. Uh, begin to feel the, the air on your skin. Begin to pay attention to your breathing and any little movements in the body. In other words, become hyper-aware in the moment of everything that's happening in and around you. Hmm. The moment that begins to happen, a stress begins to disappear because instead of attempting to uh, feel something uh, through you, uh, you are feeling uh, the world uh, through you in a different way. Instead of focusing on one thing and becoming stuck there, you're focusing on many things and becoming relaxed there. So this is a good way to begin. This is a, a way to uh, take oneself uh, into the moment, so to speak, yes? Mm-hmm. And that causes what many would call mind mindfulness. So this kind of exercise uh, begins to help release stress from the body. When one begins to discover the tranquil core that one holds within oneself, and it's not hard to find that many people think it's very hard and you have to go to other countries and uh, sit with uh, gurus, etc., uh, to achieve anything like this. And, of course, uh, that is not the truth. All they do is point uh, to you and realize uh, in that moment uh, the word guru is spelled G-R-U-D-U-R-U, -U -U, uh, you see, uh, and uh, not 
I am you, not are you you, but G U R U, and that is what we say to each and every one here uh, and out there. Let us just refrain that with a good guru. <laughs> uh, well, the truth of the matter is, it's always good to have guides. You understand? Yes. And those who would be able to point the way are those who are the most uh, uh, efficient. Yes. But in the uh, in the end of the uh, process, it is always the individual who finds that within themselves. And they are not going to find it in somebody else, mm -hmm. or uh, by somebody else, or by somebody else telling them how they can do it. The only way to do it is to step into themselves and wait for themselves to appear. Right. As we say, once you sit in quietude and you sit there quickly, uh, just paying attention to the things about you, you will find yourself becoming very relaxed. It is in that state that that you begin to realize is your true state. It is the tranquility that you hold within yourself that brings a degree of peace and a stresslessness into your life. Therefore, in future times, if you are beginning to feel stressed, you can begin to have something that you can relate to uh, inside of yourself. In other words, another way to feel right. instead of stressed. And this is the whole secret about this. It's all about how you feel. Right. For as we have said many times in the past, you're on this planet to do two things. And one is to have an emotional experience, and the other is to make choices. So the first thing you do is decide how you are going to feel, and this is one of the ways to find this way. You will know what all the emotions feel like, but it is very important to realize that in times of stress or situations that are causing a certain degree of angst because of beliefs that you are holding that may or may not be yours and may or may not necessarily be true, you see. Right. But nevertheless, there are still beliefs you are holding, and on an unconscious level, as you said before break, that is the place they hide. Right. As a result, these beliefs come up, and uh, they get in the way of events around you, thereby coloring them and creating a different effect inside of yourself than the actual event itself uh, is, uh, is doing to others. So it is this aspect that when one becomes aware, uh, one can begin to say, if I really want to know how I'm going to feel or act about these things about me, I must go into a balanced or a relaxed state of mind or find that place within myself where I feel peace and I feel grounded. When you go to that place, no matter what happens around you, you will be able to deal with it effectively mm -hmm. uh, because it will no longer be, uh, be, uh, be held by you. The way we would describe it sometimes uh, is to imagine that uh, you were at a barbecue and instead of handing you a hamburger, uh, somebody puts a hot coal in your hand. How long are you going to hold on to that coal? <laughs> Wasn't that that mind over matter thing where you can uh, you can say it's not hot? It's uh... <laughs> well, you see here, you may be able to say it, but the coal is saying uh, uh, I am very hot, and your hand is saying I am now frying. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact is, is most people cannot do the mind over matter uh, that well uh, in the beginning. So we are simply saying somebody puts a hot coal in your hand. How long are you going to hold on to it? And not long. Mm -hmm. Yet when somebody says something or an event happens around you, you begin to obsess on it. And obsessing on it is the same as if you were clenching your fist about that hot oh, coal. Cool. And that's exactly what you do. And on top of that, you not only clench your fist about it, you then hold it up to your breast and you say to yourself, I have to hold it here too. So you take it into your emotional core. So there you are. You're on fire. And the fact of the matter remains is all you had to do was drop it when it was first put in your hand and looking down at the coal, deciding what to do next, instead of having to cope with the heat from the coal and the burning sensation. Yeah. And it is the same with events that begin to evince certain emotional uh, states within oneself. When one has these things begin to arise, uh, one has the opportunity in that moment to let go of it consciously, and you have to practice this. Do not think it that comes easily. Mm -hmm. But by practicing it, in other words, each time you are reacting to something, let go of it. Do not hold on to it. If somebody says something that upsets you, look at it and let go of the emotion. Then you can think about what they said and perhaps even the reason why you had the emotion. But you cannot think about anything as long as the emotion has you in its grip. Or vice versa, you have the emotion in your grip. So emotions are just emotions. You see, mm -hmm. it's up to you to make a decision as to what you were going to do with that emotion in that given moment.
So this is what we would say is a very effective way uh, to begin to see how to deal with stress uh, by uh, using your mind and making a decision consciously to not become afraid. For example, if you are in a situation, uh, uh, for example, uh, many people have uh, been in these situations where there is uh, perhaps a, a fire. Mm. And many people who panic in a fire run right into the fire. And they open doors and they get burned. Uh, they uh, uh, don't uh, follow the rules and regulations necessary to maximize their opportunity to get out of the fire. Right. But uh, if they had been taught that, if they had gone over that, uh, and they had been taught how to be calm in the face of this, by making them realize uh, when this happens, you don't run around like a chicken with the head chopped off, but you drop to the floor and you begin to think about what you're going to do next. This is called being in a more resourceful state. So when you were in a stress state, you were the very opposite uh, to being in a resourceful state. Hmm. So the first thing to do is to begin to release the need to feel the anger or the fear or uh, whatever emotion you are experiencing that is overwhelming you, uh, looking at it and just saying, what is this? You see? Right. And when you begin to ask that question, it becomes less and less important in its manner in which you are interacting with this uh, feeling and becomes more and more evident as to what the root cause is and what the next step to take is. There is never a wrong step to take as long as you take a step away from it. Uh, the best way to change a mood or a mode in any way, as we would uh, give information regarding, is to do something different. For example, if you were feeling, if you were feeling uh, uh, depressed uh, and you were sitting down looking at the floor, stand up, take a deep breath, and uh, walk outside. It will change your mood. It will change your emotional state. If you are feeling stressed, uh, the first thing to do is to think about what we have just shared. Is to take to yourself and say, I'm feeling stressed. What am I stressed about? And the moment you have that answer, which is instantaneous because it's very obvious, yes, you mm -hmm. can begin to release yourself from needing to be in that state and step into a state of calmness and balance within that allows you to deal effectively in a resourceful way with the circumstances that are, uh, that are then beginning to impede upon your, uh, your emotional uh, wellness, you see? Would you say that most stressors are us trying to control things? Always. Hmm. Uh, this is the basis of uh, uh, stress in this way, uh, particularly uh, not so much control, but feeling lack of control, as we right. pointed out earlier. Yeah. The very fact that many people feel helpless in the world you live in today is a factor to show how much stress that people are feeling. Right. Uh, people walk down streets uh, uh, seeing buildings they don't own, walking on sidewalks they don't own, driving in cars they don't own. Mm. Everything is in the never-never in your society, so people don't feel they own anything, and the only thing that they work with is a feeling of isolation and a feeling of helplessness in a society and a circumstance that is too big for them to understand. Now, we don't want to oversimplify this, and we don't want to paint everybody with, a white, <laughs> with the same white wash, you see. But the fact remains is that many people feel some of these things at their core. And it is that part that is hidden away from everybody, even themselves at certain points. Yeah. So uh, what is the way to step away from that? And that becomes uh, uh, evident in the way that it is important to begin to look inward for what we would call uh, spiritual sentience. Not emotional sentience, but spiritual sentience. Intelligent spirituality, a way to understand that uh, there is an even bigger picture than the one that is often uh, shown in your society. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. Because you are living in a society based upon possessions, ownership, <laughs> and uh, consumerism, uh, the spiritual aspect is really not a big part of it. Whenever it's included, it's uh, to give people the spirit to buy something. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, by, by beginning to look at the aspect and the truths of spiritual truth in life, uh, one may begin to find one's own core. When one has that core in mind, then one is able to handle whatever is happening around oneself, because by understanding the bigger picture, one understands uh, about uh, 
the fact that when all things come from light, then all things are part of the oneness of conscious creation. And as a result yes. of that, one does not have to feel apart from this. One can feel a part of it. One can begin to surrender uh, to the conditions and situations around oneself called the life process. And in doing that surrendering, uh, as we have said in the past, it is not like you were waving a white flag and uh, putting your hands up and saying, I give up. It's a matter of diving in to the river of life and mm -hmm. beginning to truly become one with the energy and the flow of the river. Because that's really what you are. You are a river. You are not a pond. Uh, you are uh, always in movement. Uh, people would say to meditate, to stop thinking. In fact, uh, uh, that would be an interesting meditation, would it not? <laughs> and so the fact of the matter is that when one realizes everything is in motion and that the word emotion comes from the word motion, it's not too hard to understand that you can begin to uh, take charge of your emotions by taking charge of the motion that is around you in life. Not just outside, but the feeling of flow that comes from within, understanding as uh, you pass through the life process. Mm -hmm. So it is these things here that provide the basis for uh, not just food for thought, but perhaps a different perspective on how one would begin to interpret and deal with uh, stressful situations. Uh, because in actual fact, they are just situations. Yeah. And the moment you can say to yourself, what's the situation? Then you can begin to do something about it. The situation room is not a, uh, something on television. It is, uh, it is right between your ears. That's the situation room. That's where you have room to deal with situations around you. And the clearer your mind is, and the more balanced you are, and the more in the flow you are in the moment, when you find that peaceful core of yourself, and that peaceful core of yourself is not static. It's in motion. Once you find that, then you will know life is just something you're going through, not something you're going to that the things that you are having around you are all parts of the life process to be uh, appreciated, to be uh, truly honored and loved in that way. When one begins to have a greater appreciation of the life process, stress begins to fall away because what is there to feel stressed about? Uh, if you lose your wallet, you lose your wallet. You'll either find it or you won't. Uh, there is no point in, in sitting around uh, wishing you had it. Uh, uh, there is no point uh, saying, uh, driving yourself crazy, uh, saying, where did I put it? If you cannot find it, you must take immediate steps. And it's the same with so many other things that happen in life. It's not to be fatalistic, you understand, mm -hmm. but it is to be realistic in the sense that everything changes on your plane. That is the purpose of how you were living. That is why it is called by the Hindi uh, that be of samsara, the sea of suffering. Because uh, humans want things to remain the same and are challenged with change every single uh, millisecond of every day. And that is the truth. Uh, the change occurs about oneself even though one does not feel oneself changing. One notices the world about oneself changing. And it is those things that cause even greater frustration and greater stress. Because indeed, everybody would be much happier if things just stayed the same. People would say, we? oh, but that would be boring, yes? <laughs> yeah. But it is not. It's not boring? Uh, if things stay the same? Yeah. Oh, well, it depends upon the individual. <laughs> that would be awfully stagnating if everything stayed the same all the time. Well, we're not saying uh, like Groundhog Day that movie, you see. Uh, <laughs> but right. we are saying here, uh, staying the same in that people try to maintain a certain status quo in the way they live. Ah, yeah. Yes, they go on vacation. Yes, they do this. Yes, they do that. But they do not want to have a sense here of imminent change. Right. Well, we're afraid of change, but I don't know that anybody would be happy if their life never changed. Uh, well, that is a, is a moot question. <laughs> Uh, because that uh, doesn't happen yes, to anybody. Exactly. Yes, exactly. All right. True enough. So it, it is these things here as we speak about them uh, that we hope will bring out a few thoughts in people's minds about how to begin to cope with and view the way that they, they are dealing with situations around them. And they begin to realize that this stress that they are feeling is of their own making. 
uh, you go right down into the little basement of your mind and you <laughs> brew up a couple of bottles of stress. And you keep it ready for situations in which uh, you can hardly wait to uh, get the adrenaline pumping. Because the other part of stress is very important to realize it is a behavior pattern. Mm. It is what causes a peak experience. And of course, as you would say, if things remain the same all the time, then it would be boring. But for many people, they need a, a more of a change in their lives uh, on a regular basis. And sometimes those changes can come from emotional highs. And right. emotional highs are always, given the understanding, stressful. Right. They pump adrenaline. They create a sense here of greater sensation as if it is like a drug, and adrenaline is, the same as any other uh, uh, as any other hormone contained within the body, you see. Is there not also, though, I mean, and you've already really said it, but we do have a certain uh, pleasure, can we say, from drama? Like we, there is something about our... I don't know that, that it's maybe it's the way we grew up. Maybe it was you know that was how we thought love. That was the definition of love by the way our parents treated us or our parents treated themselves. But we certainly seem to crave this pleasure of drama. Well, as you would see, it is a learned experience. Yes. But the learned experience it falls hand in hand with the release of certain chemicals in the body that create emotional right. or physical highs. Uh, the old story or joke about why do you keep hitting yourself in the head with that hammer? <laughs> the answer being because it feels so good when I stop, you see. So you have something to compare it with. Right. Hitting yourself in the head with a hammer, stress, stopping, which is the relief after the stress is gone. Both produce very specific uh, chemicals in the body, you see, uh, that create uh, uh, very, uh, very specific emotional states that are desired in one way or another. That is why people like to go on roller coasters, why they like to mm. watch horror movies about things that could never exist <laughs> in the wildest of dreams, and they like to be scared. Uh, they like to go to uh, uh, the scary, uh, scary places uh, at Halloween and things like that uh, because uh, the fear factor is a stressful situation, mm -hmm. but it is what you would might call controlled fear. Right, right, right. You see? Yes. But it is nevertheless just as real. <laughs> because, you see, it has already been discovered by your own scientists that anybody watching or experiencing something, for example, as something on television or on your movies that is causing a, a peak emotional state with the people on screen, the individuals in the audience empathize, and if you took uh, that be of a brainwave of them in the mm. moment uh, uh, reading, yes, uh, you would not be able to tell the emotion on the screen from the emotion the individual is feeling inside of themselves even though they were not directly having the experience. Right. So this brings a lot into, into, into play again to understand that and to understand how powerful the memory is by bringing back old emotional states right. and injecting them into, into, into present situations. Right. This is what uh, many would call, uh, that be referred uh, as of uh, uh, a collective uh, consciousness, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, and by collecting these uh, together these these feelings and putting them in this way and they come up they become available uh, and in certain moments uh, they create uh, a great emotional stress but that emotional stress is something uh, that is indeed uh, just part of a, a part of a, a, what we would call an emotional uh, a, a junkie behavior right. you see mm -hmm. So it is very interesting to note these things and to note the, the different reasons for wishing stress as well. But individuals who experienced uh, lots of stress, you will find, and who live their lives in a very dramatic uh, way, have a tendency uh, to, uh, to have uh, uh, this going on all the time. And even though they complain about it, uh, they only serve to uh, exacerbate it. You see, they don't right. try to get rid of it. Right. right. So what we would say to people is, if you become aware of these things, if you want to think about these words, if you want to turn it around and say, you know what, I am in charge of my brain, my thinking, my life, and you know what, this is an old behavior that I brought forward from my childhood, and even perhaps from my family behaviors that I have learned mm -hmm. and no longer wish to entertain. It takes too much energy 
we were simply talking about the way that people interact with their stresses yes. and the different ways to get around them. Yes. Some people might say by going back and looking at uh, something that happened in the past uh, within consciousness, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, reworking it, you're just kidding yourself because what you're really doing in that moment is uh, trying to make a, a, a false past. Right. In actual right. fact, right. what you are doing is creating a different solution. And what you were doing is instead of remaining in the old gestalt or collection of information that you've been bringing along with you all your life and feeding, what you're doing is coming up with a different solution for a certain behavior or a certain reactive state. That way, the next time something comes up that triggers it, you have something more to fall back on and say, oh yeah, I remembered when I came up with a different solution. And that way you have a different way of acting and behaving in that moment rather than the old, natural, uh, easy to fall into uh, pattern. You see? Okay. That's perfect. I want to thank you, Willows. Uh, I think we'll be bringing David back for the last segment. So if you have any final words to, uh, to comment. Uh, simply to say, uh, uh, live your life with stresslessness. Mm. Uh, we would say here to remember uh, the word emotion comes from the word motion. So whatever direction uh, you are heading in emotionally, uh, just remember you can change the direction by changing the emotion. Uh, when you change the emotion, oh, correction, by changing the, by changing the motion. And when you change the motion, then you change the emotion. So we just want to make that clear within yourself and uh, to those who are uh, uh, tuned in, you see? Yes. All right. Uh, we're going to go to break now. Thank you again, Willows, and uh, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lori Houston, and I have a great show on bmajor.org called News for the Heart. I'm an intuitive counselor, coach, and teacher with professional qualifications and certifications as well as natural, clairsentient, and claircognizant abilities. I've been on my spiritual path for over 20 years, and during that time have acquired through extensive studies, teachings, and sacred texts, over 30 different healing modalities, which are continuously being added to, as life is an ongoing journey. My passion is on relationships, limiting beliefs, energy that is blocking you, and awakening consciousness, as we become more heart-centered. You can find out more about me at my website, intuitivesoul.com, or call me at my toll-free number, 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685. And I'd be honored to connect with you. Let's get to the heart of what matters. Do you want to become more empowered, connected with your core, guided by your heart and soul's purpose, be more balanced and have more mindfulness? Are you searching for the answers, wanting to understand your relationships better? Why your intimate relationships, friends, family, and even work colleagues can impact your quality of life? How your relationships interfere with your business, career opportunities, and even starting your own business? I'm Lori Houston. I have a free weekly advice column with bmajor.org called Heart Lessons. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggle that keep us from awakening to our true essence. You can send me your questions or for more personal guidance, contact me at intuitivesoul.com. Or call me at my toll-free number, 1-855-444-SOUL. That's 1-855-444-7685. And let's get to the heart of what matters to see your heart lessons. Want to know where you can hear Lori Houston's news for the heart? Well, that's easy. You can tune in to Lori via Clear Channel's iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and at bmajor.org. Now, back to Lori Houston and News from the Heart. And welcome back. This is News for the Heart. We have David Watson back with us. The Willows have, nice have, <laughs> have gone back into, into hiding, and uh, David is now back with us. If you want more information about David, go to his website, Ask thewillows.com. You can find out about getting a Willows reading. You can find out you can do it over Skype or phone. Um, or come in person. Or definitely come in person if you're in the Toronto area. And uh, yeah, you find out more about David. I know his website's going to be changing over, sh I don't know how quickly, but I know that there is a new website in, in the process. So it'll, right it'll be a little bit more yeah. It'll be a little bit more interactive and have all of our shows and stuff on it. So anyway, uh, we've been talking about stress. And yep. the one thing, and I know that the Willis sort of ended it with 
the discussion because they really wanted people to understand that emotion is motion and that we just have to change our motion to shift out of things and I think that that's just worth still chatting about because it's I think it's a big piece that maybe people aren't aware of what emotions are I mean you know we talk about happiness and we talk about joy and we talk about these emotions that we seem to think can be cured outside of us like that somehow the outside can bring us happiness when we get you know certain things yeah. and you know it's conditional on these material things that will automatically make us happy but it really has nothing to do with outside stuff it has everything to do with inside stuff but this bit about motion is part of emotion is a, is a it's something to get your head around well it is um, I have this kind of model in my head about where our emotions come from first of all you know if we go if we go along with the concept that, that we are you know, spiritual beings on a physical, <laughs> on a physical journey, which we've talked about on many occasions. I believe I've heard that. One, yes. one, once or twice. <laughs> but 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 taking that as as as, as a baseline for it. Okay? Right. Uh, we would understand as we come out of the physical plane, we come into a body. The body then begins to have interactions with the world around us, and the energy that comes into us is pure love. I mean, that's the only way to describe it. When you pick up a child or a small, any small newborn, anything, you just feel this incredible love. Mm -hmm. Is it your love for them, or is it the love within you that's reflected back to you through the pure love within them? I like to think it's that. Well, but, I think, I mean, I, you know, when we get into relationships and we start talking about that, I would say absolutely that's the case mm -hmm. that that's you know it's not it's almost never the other person it is what we feel reflected within us that's right. when we're with that person and that's you know that's such an important thing to understand but we're talking about stress well, that's okay <laughs> I can tell it's on your mind well, right? well you know it's it's but a, that's important no it's yeah. very important because you know it's also the it's also the relationship we have with ourselves that's Absolutely. important uh, under that under that case as well but 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 when we come onto the plane we have our emotion pure love come with us and immediately the moment we arrive we start getting messed around somebody picks us up by our feet gives us a whack on the ass and the next <laughs> thing you know we're off we're off we're off to a, another another run at the uh, at the uh, for the roses so to speak yeah. but but the fact is is that as we begin to grow and we begin to have things that thwart us in our lives the different emotions are born out of that initial love so I believe we're kind of like a like a like a prism so, so that when, when our love comes into us and we're born, that, that prism forms and then it spreads into all, all emotions, everything from, from, from love, the highest human emotion, right down, to, uh, right down to shame and fear and guilt. You know, those, those yeah. really crummy, low, yeah. low vibration emotions. But all of those come through love. So my feeling yes. is, is that if we focused on that to say we're feeling shame or we're feeling anger or something like that if we take a moment and we begin to reflect on it we will always find it goes back to love or being deprived of it or not having it or wishing it or needing it or what our definition of love is based on our past experiences that showed us what we thought had to be love and many songs from the <laughs> 40s 50s and 60s as well <laughs> Uh, you know, so yeah, I, I agree with you, and and I and I think that's important. But pure love, pure, real, yes. eternal love, is 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 a love that one feels just by waking up and just by you know feeling joy to be alive. You know that that to me is is love. You mean when we wake up without pain, or <laughs> well, without pain? You know the physical pain of oh no, getting up, back. Oh well, neck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm blessed. I don't have a lot of physical pain when I wake up. That's you know. Um, it's like you. <laughs> no, well, you know, that's the way it goes. I'm very fortunate that way, I suspect. But I think, I think, I, I, you know, not wishing to equate the physical pain, but but the emotional pain yes. more to the, the effect of, yes. of 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 how we are stressed by things. And sometimes it comes out in our bodies physically, which is where we will express physical pain Absolutely. because our bodies always reflect our emotional our emotional Absolutely. body. Absolutely. You know, quote. Bruce Lipton, you know, uh, brilliant man. And, yeah. and uh, for many of you who've, who've read his work, read some more. And for those of you who haven't, <laughs> check him out. He's he's a phenomenal mind and talks about how our emotions and our thoughts affect not only how what's happening to us, 
but but the actual physical condition of our body as well. So so that's often reflected back from from how we're feeling or how we're experiencing life. Right. Us. So just getting back to the concept of, of understanding that 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 we have that love that we that we have at the base of, of of everything, but we deny ourselves or we feel denied of that love. Therefore, we're having these other emotions which are creating. The stress in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, so we don't feel emotionally complete or we don't feel emotionally balanced for one reason or another as well. Right. So those are all aspects of, of, of that feeling of, of stress that comes from lack or perceived lack of the things that we really need, you know. Exactly. Yes. So what do you think? Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's part of the big problem. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, you know, the bit about motion is that, you know, the Willows were sort of saying that if we're stuck in a certain emotion, it's because we're, you know, we're in a specific place or we're in a specific motion and then, you know, shifting that motion may assist us to, you know, getting out of that stuck place. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, if we're yeah. sitting or we're lying down too much and we're, you know, feeling depressed or we're feeling stressed, you know, get up, go for a walk, you know, ground yourself into the earth, put your feet into the ground. Well, I must say Richard Brandler, uh, one of the founders oh, yes, of NLP, yeah. NLP uh, recently came up with a, a brilliant concept. He calls it spinning. Ah. And that's not where you jump on one of those little cycles and ride like hell until you have to change your T-shirt. Yes. But rather, it's a matter of understanding that, our emotions do move, and they do spin, actually. And he says, mm -hmm. well, you know, like uh, our concept of the atom, you know, it's, it's spinning, only little electrons going around the, the, the you know, the, the core, protons in the middle, uh, and neutrons, and that sort of thing. And then outside of that, you know, we look at, we look at our planet. Our planet spins on its axis. Right. The moon spins around the earth. The earth spins around the sun. The, earth, the sun spins around its own axis. And then the sun is part of the gigantic Milky Way, which spins in a huge circle over millions of years. And even when we flush our toilets, it spins, depending <laughs> on what side of the uh, what side, <laughs> equator yes. we're on. It'll exactly. go one way or the other. But, North but, but the fact is everything has this spinning motion to it. And what he suggests is is that when we're, we're dealing with a certain emotional state you know, or a stressful state, we identify it by saying, where is it coming from inside? Quite often people say, oh, it's all in my head. You know, my head's spinning. Sometimes they'll say, oh, I can hardly breathe. Sometimes they'll say, oh, my God, it's in my chest. Everything feels so tight. Or it's in my stomach. I feel like I've got butterflies. And sometimes it just feels like we're it's, it's outside of us and we're caught up in some gigantic cyclone. Which could be true, too. <laughs> in that, you know, somebody oh, else's energy. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, it definitely could be outside of us yeah, because exactly. our auras are so large that we could be mm -hmm. picking up somebody else's energy, which that's happens. Other, that's the other part of it. All the so, time. <laughs> so, so what we what we need to do is we need to look at that emotion that we're experiencing, locate it. This is what Bandler tells us, and it works. I've I've done this with many clients, and, and thank you, Richard Bandler, you're a genius. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 this takes us to a place where. We, we begin to, first of all, close our eyes. We say, where's the, where's the emotion? Mostly I find with people, it's here, here, or here. Okay? Okay. If you have it outside, if you have it in their head, and if you have it Well, it may be inside, but it still may be coming from outside. But yes. Be that it may. Yes. We're, we're, dealing, we're dealing with what the person is experiencing at <laughs> right. the moment. So right. we find it, okay? And then what we do is we determine, with our eyes closed, which direction it's spinning. Is it spinning clockwise, counterclockwise? Is it spinning forward or backward? And when we take a moment to determine that, then we find out, when we ask ourselves, how fast is it turning on a scale of, say, 1 to 10, right? And then once you find that speed, what you then do is just attach a little brake pedal to it and very slowly. It's like you're coming to a very slow, slow stop. You put your foot down on the brake, and as you do, the spinning begins to slow down and slow down and slow down. And as the spinning slows down, people find that the emotional body begins to release itself as well. And as the emotional body begins to release itself, we, we calm down. And when we stop it totally, we feel okay. And then we attach a little, a little accelerator pedal to it, and what we do in that moment is we then spin it in the other direction and start accelerating it. And as we do, we pick it up and it begins to accelerate. We actually begin to feel better until we get to a certain point where we feel good, at which point we sort of like turn on the old uh, 
uh, cruise control and step out of the uh, step out of the, the, the you know the car of our mind and there we are we've got it we've, we've been able to change our emotion in seconds and I've had remarkable things happen to me in, in with clients over the years using this particular technique and it's not a state secret everybody should know how to use it because I teach it to clients to take mm -hmm. home and use mm -hmm. because quite frankly the easier uh, we, 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 or the more we, we take charge of our lives, the easier it is for us to live. I have a friend of mine who's got three little kids. He gets them to spin themselves to sleep at night. Oh, Daddy, I can't sleep. I'm all, all wound up. Oh, all wound up, are we? Well, Dad's got smart. He teaches, and the kids now go to sleep themselves. Nice. They go, oh, I've got to spin myself to, you know, and off they go. It's amazing. <laughs> Wow. So that's good. It's very good that we, we have the opportunity to take something that even children can repeat for themselves and begin to have such great success with. And after all, we're all just grown-up kids anyway that really never really grew up. Don't tell anybody, but it's true. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and so it's that child within that we have, to, we have to manage, we have to feed, we have to you know, nurture, and that we have to love. And, and the more that we do that, the, the more that child gives us and the more we can give the world. So that not only... You know, techniques like this not only help eliminate stress, they help bring a lot more positive love and energy into the world as well. That's my belief and my feeling. And I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> I, I, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just thinking if there's anything else about stress that we haven't really touched upon. Oh, it's probably like... a few billion things, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, uh, you know, the only thing I can say about stress personally is that. Um, I guess the being in charge bit. That's yeah. you know that's the thing that we have that's to understand. Core. We have to understand that we are in charge of everything. Absolutely. And we can't control it necessarily, but we can be we in can charge try. of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. But good luck with that because that doesn't seem to work so well. But I, right. I think that's the piece is that people need to understand we're either in it unconsciously. Or we may even be conscious of some of the stressors that we allow into our environment, and you know we have a choice. Well, yeah, we do, and the big, the biggest choice comes from how we communicate with ourselves, the language we use, uh, the kind of wording we use, and quite often one of the things that we get stressful about is if we do something and then we knew we shouldn't have done it or we could have done it better, and then we really start criticizing ourselves, which causes a lot of stress. And if we take a moment, we just stop. And say, what the heck am I criticizing myself for? You know. If somebody else did that, we wouldn't be criticizing them, mm. you know, but we're really tough on ourselves. So I always ask people to think about what, whose voice is, is doing the criticizing? Whose voice is it in my head that's criticizing me? Most of us never think of that, right. but you'll probably find out it's not yours. Right. You know, it might be mom or dad's or grandma's or the teacher at school or, you know, father Mulcahy, you know, whatever the heck it was, <laughs> there's somebody in there in our head that, that that's sort of judging us and creating that stressful situation where we don't feel adequate, where we don't feel good, where we don't feel positive about ourselves. Right. And again, why is that? Because we're taught to excel. We should be this or we should be that. We should reach right. a certain benchmark in life. And if we don't reach that benchmark, that's stressful too. Right. So it's those things that we have to begin to look at those beliefs again. Well, if I don't do this, what? Well, well oh my God, what'll happen? Well, you know, probably nothing. But <laughs> if you don't do that according to what you were taught to achieve or, 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 or accomplish in life, then you're a failure. And if you're a failure, well, that's most stressful of all, you know. Yeah. So okay. often people don't do things which stresses them out. But they're afraid to do them because if they do them, then they, they'll probably fail. And if they fail, well, that's stressful too. So it's like a catch-22 right yeah. there, you know. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So, again, these are things to ponder and to think about because I don't think there's any one solid solution to saying this is, what, this is what's going to take stress out of my life or this is what's going to make me feel less stressed. But I think, I think it's more of a matter of beginning to love and appreciate yourself, uh, to begin to take on the understanding that, uh, that life is a process of becoming. You know, and don't forget, we are human beings. <laughs> you know, we're human and we're just being. Okay, and we're being here, each one of us. And these are little hints and little help, uh, helpful hints, I hope, uh, to help uh, to help people be a little better within themselves, to treat themselves with a little more kindness and generosity, and to treat themselves with love and respect. Nice. Those are important aspects, because the moment we can do that for ourselves, then we can certainly spread it into the world around us and, and encourage other people to do it, and then encourage them to do it for others as well.
All right. You know, Perfect. The domino effect. There you go. Starts with one person at a time. Uh, you've been listening to News, News of the Heart, and uh, I appreciate David for coming by, and I don't know what our next show will be about, but I'm sure it'll be a great one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the, exactly. You can find out more about David if you go to his website, askthewillows.com. All right? Take care. Thank you. Have a question for Lori and want to be on the next News from the Heart show? Drop us a line via instant feedback at bmajor.org. News from the Heart is brought to you by Intuitive Soul and is produced by Major Radio for Clear Channel's iHeartRadio and bmajor.org.